Hey guys, my name is Z, and you're watching Z Makes It Easy. And welcome to the IGCSE Chemistry Series, where today we have Topic 4, which is Chemical Test. So here are the lessons that I'll be covering. It's relatively short. There's Gas Test, Flame Test, Cat Iron Iron Wet Test, and Iron Iron Wet Test, and Testing for Water. So check out the pinned comment in the comment section for all the timestamps. So let's move on to the first one, which is the gas test. So here are some gas, including CO2, carbon dioxide. It's poisonous, but also has lots of uses like fire extinguishers and fizzy drinks. O oxygen O2 is vital for life, as we know, but in high concentrations, it will cause things to ignite. H2 hydrogen is highly explosive, but also a great fuel. NH3 ammonia is very important in the manufacture of fertilizers, but it also smells smelly and poisonous. And CO2, chlorine gas, it has lots of industrial uses, but if you inhale it, it's poisonous. So here's the gas test, the substance, and how to test it. So for oxygen, we have relighting a glowing splint. So basically, you have a test tube if you, if you think there's an oxygen and you want to do a test. So you take a splint and you light it up, and then you blow it out so that it's still glowing, and put the glowing splint, splint over the test tube and see if it ignites or relights. And if it does, then there's oxygen present. So for hydrogen, it's basically the same. There's a, a test tube of hydrogen, and you put a, a splint with a, like a glowing fire, pull it over the, the top of the test tube, and if hydrogen is present, it will make a squeaky pop sound, and it's called the pop test. And for carbon dioxide, you, uh, you just basically bubble carbon dioxide through lime water, and if uh, the carbon dioxide is present, it turns the lime water milky, but if uh, there's more, like if carbon dioxide keeps going into the lime water, the milky lime water, the lime water will eventually turn back to colorless. So for chlorine, you basically uh put that uh turns then blue litmus paper uh, litmus red then bleaches it, and ammonia is turned it turns then red litmus paper blue. So here's more on chlorine and ammonia. So the test for chlorine gas it turns blue to red. So insert them a universal indicator paper or like any like lemus paper into the gas or like the uh, the test tube over here like this, and if the paper turns red, then bleaches. The chlorine is present, and the gas also has a characteristic sharp smell that is quite dangerous, and be careful not to inhale it. And the test for ammonia, I guess. Uh, so it turns red to blue. So insert them red lemus paper into the gas or the test tube, and if the paper turns blue, then ammonia is present. And the smell also has a characteristic, uh, like a characteristic smell that is quite dangerous, just like chlorine. And the reason why we need damp uh, UI paper is so that the water can dissolve some of the chlorine, so that it can react with the indicator on the litmus paper. So moving on, we have flame test. Uh, so here are the instructions for the flame test. You can have a read. So the purpose of this flame test is to um to see the presence of the particular metal ions based on their color over here. So like different ions have different colors. And the difference between cation and anion is cation is a, a positive ion and anion is negative ion. So think of cation like cat, cat ion, cat is like always happy. So it's a positive ion and anion is negative ion. So we'll move on to the metal ion and the color. So for lithium ion, we get red Sodium ion yellow, potassium ion is lilac. Like how we uh, react, pota like uh, potassium alkaline metal with water, you get lilac flame. So lilac, calcium orange red, copper ions blue green, barium apple green, and strontium which is bright red. So here's the cation wet test. So here's a test for aqueous cations which are the same. We have ammonium, which is NH4+, and if you put ammonium into aqueous sodium hydroxide, the ammonia produce, uh, produce turns damp red litmus paper blue, and you can't put it in aqueous ammonia because it's the same, so no displacement can happen. So you can have a read for the different observations and what will happen. And here, as you can see, uh, four different things over here, and most of them have a uh, PPT, which stands for precipitate, so this is what a precipitate looks like. It's basically a solid that's produced. So we'll move on now. 
we have more on ammonium for the cation wet test. The ammonium ion, which is NH4+, can be identified by adding sodium hydroxide solution. So here you, here you have NH4 uh, plus plus OH minus equals NH3 plus H2O. So here's a sodium hydroxide, but it's OH, so because the sodium doesn't matter. And it's a reversible reaction. And here's the sign for the re reversible reaction. However, no precipitate is formed. Instead, by heating the mixture, it produces ammonia gas, which turns red litmus paper blue, as we talked about just now. And here's anion wet test. And for, uh, for the first time, we'll look into sulfate ions. And sulfate ions, which are SO42 minus, are identified by adding a few drops of barium chloride solution. And the solution must be acidified first with a few drops of, uh, of dilute nitric acid. And a white precipitate of barium sulfate forms. So here you have the reaction. You have AQ plus AQ. So when you have AQ, aqueous plus aqueous, you get a precipitation reaction, which produces, produces a solid. And the solid is barium sulfate because it's insoluble. And the ionic equation for this reaction is SO4 2 minus plus Ba2 plus aqueous equals BaSO4. Basically, you, you cancel out the spectator ion. So in this case, it will be Na from here and Cl from here, which, which cancels out with the sodium chloride. So we'll move on now. We have the anion wet test for carbonate ions. Metal carbonates, which contain CO3 2 minus ions, are identified by the addition of a few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid. And the colorless gas is given off as the carbonate re ion reacts with the hydrogen ions. And the ionic equation for this reaction is CO3 2 minus the, uh, the metal carbonate, the carbonate um, ions, plus 2H plus equals CO2 gas and H2O. And the colorless gas given off is uh, the CO2 or carbon dioxide. And you can test it by bubbling through lime water as we talked about for the first lesson. So we'll move on now. Uh, then we have the anion ion wet test, the halide ions or the halogen ions. So like chlorine, chlorine ions, bromide ions or iodine ions are called halide ions and they are in group 7. And halide ions are detected by adding nitric acid and then silver nitrate solution. And here's an important note. The nitric acid reacts with other ions that might also give a precipitate such as carbonate ions. And if halides are, uh, halides are present, a precipitate will form. And these precipitates form are, are like normally silver halides. So here you have a halide. A chloride and silver nitrate which forms silver chloride which is insoluble so it's S and it's also a precipitation reaction because AQ plus AQ and here's an ionic equation which cancels out all the spectator ion. So we'll move on now. Then we have the anion ion wet test for observations. So here's testing for sulfate ions we have the equation and once testing for and the observation. So the milky precipitate form is the barium sulfate because it's insoluble and it's solid. And for carbonate ions, N ions, sorry, we have this reaction equation. And lime water turns cloudy due to the formation of carbon dioxide. And halide N ions, we have this reaction. And a white precipitation forms too due to the formation of silver chloride. And we'll move on now. We have the ionic equations for the reactions we saw just now. You can have a read. So just cancel out the spectator ion. And we'll move on now. Then we have testing for water at last. We have uh, a starter for dot and cross diagram. We have the ionic bond and the covalent bond. So ionic bond happens between a metal and a non-metal. And from year 9, the definition of ionic bond is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged um, ions. And the definition for covalent bond in year 9 is the electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and their nuclei. So we'll move on now to testing for water, which we have anhydrous and hydrated copper sulfate. Let's talk about in the acids and bases topic. So anhydrous means that it's dehydrated and hydrated means that there's water present. So for hydrated copper sulfate, it's blue, and CuSO4 with uh, H2O, it's not plus, but it's together because it's called the water of crystallization. So for every one mole of CuSO4, we have five moles of H2O, 
I need some blue due to uh, the copper to ion uh, present. And in the end, hydrogen copper sulfate, that's only CuSO4 and it's plus H2O, but it, it can be evaporated. And CuSO4 alone is white color, that's why it's called white anhydrous copper sulfate. So here's the reversible reaction for the reaction I talked about just now. The CuSO4 is solid plus 5H2O can turn into CuSO4.5H2O, but these two are reversible. So it's called a reversible reaction. And we'll look more into the exothermic and endothermic reaction, including the forward and backward reaction, in the later coming topic in rate equilibrium and energetics for the same um, equation. So we'll move on to testing for water, the same thing. We have an anhydrous copper sulfate. It's not completely anhydrous because you can see there's some blue, but it's generally whiter. So anhydrous and hydrated copper sulfate, which is much bluer, with a 5 moles of H2O, and it's an exothermic reaction. And we'll move on to the lastly, some questions. We can have a read. You have the mass, mass, and the moles, calculate the moles, then you have x equals 2. So we know that the CaSO4 to H2O, the ratio is 1 to 2 of moles. So the water of crystallization will be CaSO4 dot 2 H2O. And for hydrated mercury nitrate crystals with water, you have the ratio of 1 to 2 due to some calculations you can have a read. And that's why you get HeNO32 dot 2 H2O. And if you don't understand uh, this water of crystallization experiment or like the equations or the questions, you can check out my, my previous video which is chemical calculations from my channel. And if you still don't understand, you can feel free to drop a comment in the comment section or just email me or uh, DM on my Instagram in the description box. And that's it for this topic 4 of IGCC chemistry series where today we have chemical tests. And if you found it useful, please drop a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And check out my Instagram in the, the description box if you want more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.